Good evening. What's going on there, guys? It is the Earth Master here on the live stream on this Tuesday evening, September 6, 2022. It is about 6.54 p.m. West Coast time here in California, and it's a hot one. We peaked out here at 118 degrees just outside of Chico. That's the that's the uh, real feel. I mean, that's the uh, actual air temperature. Uh, we did have a little bit of humidity and a little dew point issue as well uh, in the low 60, 60s for the uh, dew point, uh, peaking us out at 123 degrees for the feels like temperature. But either way, uh, man, it was a hot one for sure. Uh, 1.2 earthquake up here into the Alaska area. Wouldn't mind being up there right about now. Whew, so far the power grid here in California is holding steady. But of course, everyone getting off work and whatnot, so we'll uh, see if that remains throughout the remainder of the night. Activity around the uh, Izu Trench over here, uh, kicking up as well over the last 24 hours. Let's go ahead and check out the latest map here from the USGS. We're going to start off here actually with the uh, Yellowstone activity first, or lack of Yellowstone activity. Uh, this is the uh, last 24 hours there on the UTC time schedule. Showing some movement, uh, pretty much microquake activity earlier this morning time frame. But uh, as you look out through the afternoon uh, and into right now, only a couple small specks here on the Yellowstone graph. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd still say the swarm kind of continued today. No major outburst like we've seen here a couple nights ago as far as that intense swarming goes. That was pretty crazy. Uh, Afghanistan over here, seen a little bit of activity. Eastern Afghanistan, including... Uh, Looks like a 4.8. Uh, that one from uh, early evening last night sometime. The most recent quake is a 4.1 at 210 kilometers. This area does see quite a bit of deep earthquake movement up here across the region and these plate boundaries. A lot of pushing up of the uh, mountains over time. A major seismically hazard area uh, Afghanistan is. Uh, throughout the rest of the region, though, uh, only a, it looks like maybe one earthquake out here around the uh, Greece area. This one coming in from, uh, looks like, uh, last night as well. So not a whole lot of renewed activity here on the USGS map. Uh, looking at the EMSC model, they're showing about the same as far as uh, the larger quakes go. Got to zoom in just a tad bit to see some of these twos and uh, some smaller quakes here. But over, overall, things look pretty uh, minimal across the region. Not a whole lot of uptick in activity. A couple of threes, low-grade threes there um, in the uh, uh, Mediterranean Sea region. All right, looking down here, uh, of course, we had some activity in the South Sandwich Islands. Someone mentioned about spam sandwiches today uh, in a comment. Yes, I do read all the comments. Uh, that actually sounds pretty good, some spam sandwiches. Uh, but for earthquake activity... We haven't really seen too much following these three earthquakes that struck earlier th earlier this morning. The largest one so far, 5.7 there in the South Sandwich Trench area. Uh, South America got a 5.0 into the Chile area. This one kicking off earlier this morning. And it looks like we got one earthquake here uh, as well. A little bit more uh, uh, further up north. And a little bit deeper as well along the Peru Chile Trench at 115 kilometers here. So a little bit slight uptick in movement there along the South America region. The Puerto Rico area, not a whole lot for 2.5 and above. Let's bring up the one day all magnitudes here. Still looking only a, about 20 earthquakes or so for microquakes. Latest one, a 2.5 in that swarming area of Puerto Rico. Eastern part of the state's pretty quiet. A couple small earthquakes scattered out and about the Southern Plains and the uh, New Madrid zone, but nothing major kicking up here along the West Coast at all, uh, aside from the heat, right? Massive heat dome. And uh, all this week we are underneath a excessive heat warning, so it's supposed to be ab above 110 uh, through Friday. Absolutely brutal. Uh, one earthquake here, it looks like outside of the Livermore region, 1.6 at 6.7 kilometers. Looks like it's just off of this fault system here, the Greenville Fault. Uh, aside from that, a couple spotty earthquakes throughout the Sierra Nevada, Ridgecrest area, not looking active at all. Only four earthquakes there uh, listed on the map. One earthquake on the Garlock Fault structure uh, just outside of the Tehachapi area. That one had about 2.8 kilometers. And it looks like a quarry blast 
out here as well producing a 1.7 pretty crazy when you got uh, uh, more query blasts than you do earthquakes out here nah there's actually uh, quite a bit here of microquake activity but uh, still though it looks pretty much well uh, below the typical background activity in any given day here along the west state uh, western coast uh, down here 3.4 this earthquake uh, looks like it's right off the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault here uh, not a big earthquake whatsoever but it is somewhat deep at about 17 kilometers down there uh, the rest of the fault system this plate boundary here looks pretty quiet including the Brawley seismic zone and the Imperial Fault all pretty quiet today only a couple, uh, a couple handfuls of uh, earthquakes and very small microquakes up and down the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, Nevada and uh, other areas all look pretty quiet, folks. Not a whole lot going on, to be honest. Uh, Alaska getting a trail of activity throughout the Anchorage area, heading up north. Man, that just sounds awesome right now to be up there in Alaska. I know they get hot, but they don't get 110 degree days uh, like we do. We've had more 100 degree days than we've had in years, many years. Fairbanks seen a little bit of activity, and the Cook Inlet area all seen a little bit of microquake movement uh, over the last 24 hours. Out on the big island, Mauna Loa, 1.9. Uh, pretty shallow though, way up there at the crater area. Notice the depth, negative 1.2, indicating a very shallow earthquake happening right there at the uh, uh, Mauna Loa volcano. Rest of the activity is pretty minimal across the Pahala area. Um, let's check out the hazard notification system on the volcanoes uh, for the HVO. Uh, doesn't look like there's any new updated info. Uh, there was, let's see here, Kilauea informational statement. This one was put out uh, on the 5th. So a, it's a little old, but the UTC time there shows the 6, uh, and I'm sure that's regard to that 4-pointer they uh, kicked off or had here uh, yesterday. Looks like there was a 4-pointer uh, at about 20, uh, 20 miles deep. The earthquake had no apparent impact on either Mauna Loa or Kilauea volcanoes. Uh, this earthquake is part of the seismic swarm underneath the Pahala area, which has been ongoing since 2019. But earthquakes in this region have been observed as far back as the 1960s. But aside from that, uh, all volcanoes look uh, normal. Cascades as well. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Samoa Islands, American Samoa. Let's see if we got uh, continual activity out there, which I'm sure we do. Color code remains at yellow. Alert level as advisory. The earthquake swarm is continuing on the Tau Island. There is the 24-hour recorded map here showing uh, seismicity here in the region. Earthquake activity, although not a lot. Uh, there it looks like there's maybe a couple upper twos right here, possibly reaching up into the uh, three range. But aside from that, there's just a handful a very small microquakes throughout the region so it kind of looks to me it looks like it's dying down a little bit here over the last 24 hours as far as the earthquake activity at the Tau volcano again uh, this has been ongoing here for a few weeks now uh, it's been confined to this specific area no migration of uh, movement with the swarm but it's definitely something we're watching pretty closely and um, as far as a recent update goes this is put out um, early this morning, about 6 a.m. Uh, Hawaii time. Earthquake swarm related to, uh, to uh, Tau Island continues with no significant change noted there. So, uh, The largest event uh, occurred yesterday at 432 with an estimated magnitude of 3.9. So things are... Uh, looks like their uh, USGS staff was on the Tau Island today to begin the installation of Global Position System Receiver Monitoring Site or uh, monitoring data. That is pretty cool. Uh, this will detect very slight movements of the ground and uh, could possibly uh, help the folks there understand what's going on uh, as far as if there's any uplift of the area. Um, there is quite a bit of um, 
GPS stations here listed on the map. I don't know if they have any right now. Um, American Samoa. It kind of looks like they're on. They're on there right now. Um, although there's not a whole lot listed over here, folks, where we're uh, kind of looking at. So we'll wait for that. Um, unfortunately, the closest one looks like it's right over here, and can't you know can't really base any information off of this one that's far away. So we'll watch that pretty closely, see if they update stuff. Um, let's see what else is there. The trimmer map tonight along the Cascadia subduction zone, zero epicenters, and once again that makes like day number five of nothing, zero trimmers. So I don't know if they're having issues or if the swarm where the uh, tremor event just completely stopped altogether. Solar weather activity as well, kind of uh, tapering off a little bit. Here's the latest information here from solarham.net site. Uh, notice that uh, coronal hole that has been giving us quite a bit of auroras at the higher latitudes and the uh, mid-latitude regions is now way away from us, facing de uh, definitely far away. Uh, and I'm sure it's even further than that on the latest updated info, which is over here. Not having any type of effect here on planet Earth. Far as sunspot activity goes, again, there is some, but they're not as, uh, they're just not, they're not cool, so to speak. They're just uh, sitting there and they're not really doing a whole lot. We got another, we got a little development down here. This one's kind of getting some blues and orange and yellows close together and growing a little bit as far as the, magne the uh, complexity of the magnetic field. Uh, so we will watch that one. I don't know if it's been named yet. Notice it is circled here on the uh, map, on the image. And uh, there's a couple newly developed sunspots here that's going to end up getting some names here pretty soon as far as their, the uh, number goes here. But the ones that are numbered are not looking, like I said, they're not all that great uh, as far as producing any type of solar flare activity. And looking at the current solar flare x-ray chart, just barely getting into the sea flare category, just a couple little spikes there. Those are some low grade sea flares. We are still seeing a little bit of KP index up there around the four range. And I think they called that over the next couple nights here, just some residual uh, uh, activity. Current solar weather activity, as far as the data goes, um, just about neutral. Not a whole lot going on. Had a little bit of southward tilt here earlier this morning, it looks like, and overnight. Uh, but things are just kind of uh, mellowing out currently, folks, in the uh, in the solar weather department. Let's see. I think that's about it as uh, far as the update goes um, not gonna go into a whole bunch of weather stuff just kind of wanted to see what we got far as uh, and yeah, getting dark out here so we can't really see too much in terms of the uh, activity and there's not a whole lot we got some thunderstorm development uh, kind of brewing uh, up into the uh, Sierra Nevada, but that's the only thing that's going to do is start more fires. Speaking of fires, let's give a quick check here from the Watch Duty site app. Um, there's the fire that started up around the Weed, California area, um, the Mill Fire. Unfortunately, there were some uh, some uh, fatalities with that fire. It was not good. Um, it is 55% contained. The reason why they're getting a pretty good handle on it. Uh, look at that, it's burning up near Sh Lake Shastina. Um, is because it's not a whole lot of dense forested areas up here. Um, very spotty, but there is still brush. Um, some very dry brush out there. But nothing like we had seen over here around the uh, Klamath River area where it was just a massive um, you know, thickness of forest. So hopefully they get that under control. Uh, still got the uh, fire burning out over here near the Willow Creek area. There's the mountain fires. It, what's kind of weird though is this one started up out of the blue the same time this one started. And uh, this one's out there. Uh, far away from any uh, you know, major 
areas. It almost looks like it started right there on the road. It's at 11,000 acres, 20% contained. Now this area is forested and dry. Um, not for sure what caused it. There were no lightning storms up here. It just happened to pop up out of the blue. Uh, I tell you what, some weird stuff going on. It's getting to be that time of the year when fires just magically appear out of the blue. Uh, the Six Rivers Lightning Complex here. Uh, this is the big one that's been burning for a little while as well. 73% contained at 41,000 acres. And it uh, looks like they're finally, finally maybe getting a handle on that. Uh, as far as Northern California goes, is there's a few. There's definitely some more fires up here through the Sierra Nevada. And... Uh, you know, it's we don't enter into our rainy season until sometime in November. So this record heat, dry conditions uh, for the next, uh, who knows long. I, hopefully we get some rain in November. Hopefully. But, and then again, we're running into a triple dip La Nina season. And La Nina for us here in Northern California means drier conditions. Um, colder, but drier. Um, and up in Oregon and Washington, these guys get the heavier rainfall from La Nina patterns. We, here along the West Coast and Southern California area, need the uh, El Nino. We need that, <coughs> that southern dip, or jet, I should say, that brings in the uh, the more tropical-type moisture here in the wintertime. And we've had some, some pretty flooding events during those seasons. <coughs> Grab me a drink of water real quick. It's just been hot. Too hot. It's, and it's even too hot to be out in the pool right now. So, you know, who wants to be out in 118 degree heat cooking in a, in a stew, so to speak. But, uh, alright guys, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a good night. Uh, stay safe out there and stay cool. Power grid, like I mentioned, is holding up so far here, here in, uh, in California. And uh, hopefully it stays that way. Uh, if not, we do have generators here, and we will be back up if something does happen. No rolling blackouts here along this area of Northern California, but they're they're talking about it down around Sacramento. I don't know if they actually went through with it or not, but uh, yeah. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good night. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.